Welcome to Murfreesboro Storytellers, a bicentennial celebration. I'm John Hood, who will be serving as your host for this series. Our city is celebrating its 200th birthday, and each month of this over year long celebration has a theme to showcase everything that has made Murfreesboro so special. Over the next several months, our program will cover a variety of topics, from our work to our music to so much more. This month, the theme for the Bicentennial is about the rich heritage of Murfreesboro and those families that helped build the city in the early days. And our guests for this first program are Matt Murphy, local attorney, Pam Caius, community volunteer, and Jock Rucker, local attorney. As a matter of fact, Pam coincidentally is the wife of an attorney, so we have the, the bar well represented here. Matt Murphy of the Colonel Hardy Murphy family, uh, Pam Caius of the Captain William Lytle family, and Jock Rucker of the Thomas Rucker family. All those three gentlemen, if you will, had a part in getting Murfreesboro started to where it's located now. Matt, uh, your ancestor was Colonel Hardy Murphy? That's correct. He, w he was born in Murfreesboro, North Carolina, and fought in the Revolutionary War with Captain William Lytle, and they were very close. And he moved to Tennessee shortly before he died but he lived in Franklin, Tennessee for about two years, but had four children who settled on his property in Murfreesboro. So interesting, Colonel Hardy Murphy never actually lived in Murfreesboro, but his family did, right? He lived with his older son in Franklin, but had four of his children who settled here. Now, Pam, Captain William Lytle, as Matt has said, was a good friend of uh, Colonel Hardy Murphy's, fought together in the Revolutionary War, and he wanted to get this land uh, uh, located, uh, well, get this city located on the land that he had and name it for Colonel Hardy Murphy. Was that the? He did. He um, served in the Revolutionary War with uh, uh, Colonel Hardy Murphy. And um, after the war was over with, he was given a, a land grant. Um, actually, it was for several thousand acres, and his brother, who um, Archibald um, Lytle, who never actually moved to Murfreesboro, died, and he inherited um, more of the land, and they decided, you know, that it would be in Middle Tennessee, and I think it was over 26,000 acres that he had. And Jock, you, you're, uh, well, Thomas Rucker was one of those interested in also seeing the, the uh, city of Murfreesboro located on land that he had, I believe. He was. Uh, he and his brother James, Thomas and James, moved down here from Virginia. And then my great-great-grandfather Edmund also moved down from Virginia and settled here. And Thomas and James started acquiring land. And Thomas was a politician. He enjoyed uh, the politics and, and got involved in that. And he, but he and his brother James and actually another brother-in-law were the ones that uh, acquired land along Stones River. I guess at that time, this was pretty well the wide open spaces as far as settle settlement was concerned, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. There were very, very few people here. What, uh, what is your relationship now to Colonel Hardy Murphy? How many? Uh, he would be my great, great, great grandfather. All right. And the Murphy family has been a part of this community over those uh, many years, correct? Yes. As I said, he had about Fifty to 70,000 acres in Middle Tennessee. Three of his children settled in Franklin and four settled here. One of his uh, daughters built Oakland's on the um, north side of town. The Oakland's mansion? Yes. Right. Uh, his son, my ancestor, owned the property on the south side of Main Street. And then Bellwood, which was then known as Uxer Hall, uh, on the Manchester Highway was a daughter, Ms. Burton, and Grantland's, another daughter, Ms. Dickinson, was where Murphy Avenue and Grantland's is off of uh, Loki Lane. Now, Pam, the uh, Captain William Lytle retained a, one of the prime lots, is that right, according to stories that have been circulated? That's uh, what I've heard. That's what you've heard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've Referred heard. Referred to as Lot 53, I believe. <laughs> he actually uh, had a home over where the Carnation milk plant was off of Salem Road, and um, 
the Lytle Cemetery is right at the edge of Haynes Brothers. And is Captain um, Lytle buried there? Yes, Captain, Captain Lytle and a lot of his family members are buried there. Um, he was married to Nancy Ann Taylor and they had seven children and um, then his daughter Ann, um, uh, who is really closer as far as I'm concerned with uh, being a descendant, she had ten children, so there are a lot of Lytles around. <laughs> I, I believe so. And we have a, the, the Lytle Street obviously was named yes. for the Lytle family. Yeah. Now, yeah. where do you fit into the uh, the uh, the family tree as far as the, well, the Lytles? Well, uh, Captain William Lytle would be my fourth great-grandfather. Um, I have a granddaughter now, and that would be her eighth great-grandfather so, so continues, yes it does it does by the way we have two uh, DAR chapters here one the Colonel Hardy Murphy chapter and one the Captain William Lytle chapter right so those names are continue to be preserved in various aspects of the community That's right. I didn't know why they had two different chapters uh, no particular reason well I guess, for other. your descendants um, I'm a member of the Captain William Lytle because my descendant Thank you. Uh, okay. is a Revolutionary War person and uh, so I'm a member of that chapter so you have to be a descendant to be a member of either chapter yes yes no. you have to trace it back okay. one way or another very, to very, be a member. very simple uh, we have uh, Jock Rucker is an attorney Matt Murphy is an attorney well there are other attorneys in the uh, in the Rucker line of uh, descendants? There was. Uh, you mentioned the one being the politician. That's right. Um, he, he was, and um, um, actually you go back on my grandmother's side of the family, and that's where you have a little more uh, of uh, legal history in our family that goes back. Uh, <coughs> my son now practices with me, and he's right. the fifth generation of our family that uh, is practicing law here. That's wonderful. So, uh, practice of law con continuing. How about your family? I, mean, I know your father was a doctor. My father, grandfather, and great-grandfather were all doctors. all doctors. So I'm sort of a family disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Jack. <laughs> you weren't interested in pursuing uh, medicine then? I, I no, I, I <clears throat> never really was interested in it. Now you have one of your, your one son that's practicing law with you as Correct. well. Correct. That's Brick, of course. Uh -huh. T tell me about some of the, the family uh, uh, stories that, 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 that you know about. We were sort of discussing before we started uh, the program. Jock, you, you were talking about an interesting uh, situation. Well, um, in uh, January of 1804, I've tried to get my dates All right, very here. Good. There was a meeting at Thomas Rucker's house when they were trying to organize Rutherford County and pick a county seat. And uh, at that organizational meeting, they picked Jefferson as being the county seat. And um, a few years later, in about 1811, the citizens in Rutherford County wanted a more centralized location mm -hmm. of the county seat. So there were three individuals that um, wanted to give land for that city. One was Thomas Rucker, and his land was located near the where the VA hospital is now. Okay. Captain William Lytle wanted to give land that ended up being Murfreesboro, of right. course. And then Charles Reedy had land that he wanted to give. And, and I presume his land was near the Cannon Rutherford County line, uh, line. It was. And of course the Lytle land was obviously the, the best location because it was the most central location. Right. But it was a pretty fierce competition. and. Uh, by a what I'm told a four to three vote by the then right. commissioners they moved the county seat to Murfreesboro. And the county seat originally was at Old Je Jefferson or Old Jefferson it was referred to because of the river I presume for transportation wasn't it? That's right. So we didn't have the river but we do have Town Creek. Uh, Old Jefferson of course was closer to Nashville right. and the Cumberland River and it was a settled fairly large community before Murfreesboro was. As I understand it, there was a turnpike or a road that went from Nashville to Jefferson to Reedyville, which is one of the reasons I presume that Colonel Hardy, I mean, uh, uh, Charlie Reedy got involved in this land situation because that road, which was a major uh, and one of the fewer highways, uh, connected all those locations. The, the Murphys were very interested in Captain Lytle's land being the city of the center because they owned all around the Lytle land. The 
children did, but as it turned out, uh, Captain Reedy's granddaughter married Colonel Hardy's grandson, my great grandparents. I didn't realize kept that. Kept it in the family. Yeah, kept it in the family, <laughs> that's true. You know, back then, uh, it, this was just the Wild West. Right. Uh, Knoxville was pretty settled, um, but as far as anything west, it was really um, completely unsettled. There were very few people. Um, Captain William Lytle, matter of fact, tried to live in this area for a couple of years, and they were attacked so many times that he moved to Nashville where there were more people mm -hmm. and a couple of years later he came back into Middle Tennessee or Murfreesboro and um, that's when more settlers came. And you mentioned Knoxville wasn't <coughs> the legislature meeting yes. there that was essentially the state capital at yes. that time? for a while yes. For a while. Uh -huh. So and we didn't have telephones or the internet or anything so everything happened at a very very slow pace you know we we <coughs> were a, a, a city or a settlement, but we were really not uh, on the books per se for a long time because it took that long to get back to Knoxville to have everything signed and sealed and um, like it ought to be. We didn't have the instant communication we no, have of today. No, we didn't. Uh, mentioning the state capital, of course it was later in Murfreesboro and uh, uh, met, I believe, at the original site of the First Presbyterian Church mm -hmm. when it did meet. And coincidentally, all three of you are, are or have been members of the First Presbyterian Church, so that, so that brings it uh, into focus as well as uh, emphasizing that you're celebrating your 200th uh, anniversary at the Presbyterian yeah. Church. Yeah. Well, what are some of the activities going on at the Presbyterian Church uh, this year? Uh, well, they're having different <coughs> um, ministers to come in that have been there over the years. Um, one Sunday, they had all the ushers dressed in period costume. Oh. Uh, they've done a, a, a cookbook to celebrate the bicentennial, so just different things uh, during the year. Was the location of the Presbyterian Church at that time near where the city cemetery is today yes. on, on yes. Vine Street? Yes. It, it the church <coughs> there was burned during the Civil War, okay, and at, that's where the capital was. And then when they moved to College Street, the tornado blew yeah. the first <laughs> church down there. Somebody had a run of bad luck, I guess. Was that the 1913 tornado? Or? Okay. All right, so that, that, that had a lot to do with changing some local scenery then. My grandparents were going <coughs> to marry there, and the church blew down the day before the wedding, so they had to marry in the Methodist church. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> the uh, former location of the first Methodist church downtown, I presume. Yeah, okay. There at College and Church Street. John, if you see some pictures of the First Presbyterian Church in 1913, it did not have the columns that it has now. Did not? It did not. And uh, When were they added, was, do you know? It was, it was, they were added when they re rebuilt okay. the church at, at in 1913 or 14. Subsequent to that tornado. Right after okay. that. All right. And they put the dome on the top of it that exists now mm -hmm. and put the columns in front of it and changed the appearance of it quite a bit. Okay. What would Colonel Hardy Murphy, Captain William Lytle, uh, Thomas Rucker, what, what would they say today if they saw the Murfreesboro that they helped to uh, found and organize? What would their reaction be? Shock, for one thing. <laughs> this was a very um, agricultural <coughs> area, uh, and we hardly have any agricultural land left in Rutherford County. One time we had 150 dairy farms, I believe. That's today right. we have only a half a dozen at that many. <laughs> I think they would be very surprised <coughs> at all of the innovations and uh, commerce and the diversity. Of course, we're really proud of our educational system. And um, I read that um, a lot of the Lytle women were all educated women. Uh, and at that time, that was uh, a rarity. Uh, uh, one of the things I have at my house that I'm most proud of, and it's come down through our family, it's about <coughs> the only thing left, I think, um, that my particular mm -hmm. strain of the family has <coughs> is a ladder back chair that mm. was cut off um, to sit way down low by the fireplace and the story is that um, Captain William Lytle's daughter read her books by uh, the fireplace and could sit in this little mm. ladder back chair so what that's about the treasure. only thing I have <laughs> left but it's it's a real prize to me.
Matt, in a letter you had uh, shared with me, there is a uh, Murphy Cemetery, I believe, in Williamson County. Is that correct? Yes, it's about six miles outside of Franklin, and that's where Hardy is buried. And he, his oldest son, got the land there. The state divided up Hardy's land after he died because he didn't have a will, but it's on the Murphy Fork of the Harbor mm -hmm. River near Franklin. Okay. You had indicated that maybe some marker you might bring from that cemetery and relocate it in Murfreesboro? No. W we recently, the family passed the hat to restore the cemetery and got a historic marker placed over there. At the cemetery. And we thought pardon. maybe some of the money we've collected, we might do a marker similar to what Captain Lytle has here and place it somewhere in Murfreesboro. Okay. Are there other members of the Lytle family here, uh, living here? Yes, um, Ben McFarland, Judge Ben Hall McFarland is um, one of my relatives right. and a, a descendant. Uh, there, there are quite a few people that um, have claimed. Barbara Kidwell um, is a relative. Yeah, Kidwell's wife, right, okay. Um, Bud Jer or Ed Jordan is a relative. Shanley Caprive is a relative, so there, there are lots of us. There really <laughs> are. The Ledbetter family. The Ledbetter, the Ledbetter Phil family. Ledbetter. Patterson yes. family. Yes, yes. And the Patterson uh, family. So yeah. still a lot of those families here. And other, other than your direct family, are there many Murphys here? Most of the Murphys, other than us, have died out. Mm -hmm. The Jatun family, the Patterson family okay. are Murphy descendants but there are very few left in Murfreesboro. Jock, how about the Rucker family? I know of several Rucker families, but are they all related one way or the other? Well, the families that are related to us actually live in Nashville. There's another John Rucker in Nashville. Okay. And, um, but uh, our family, I think, is the only one left. Um, of course, I have cousins of my father's brother, right. uh, but I believe we're the only ones that are left from that Thomas Rucker and, and Edmund Rucker line. Right. You were telling me about a, even a, a lawsuit in recent times had to do with the Thomas Rucker land, which is where the VA hospital is located now. Interesting story. Yeah, uh, I'll back up just a little bit. Um, the Veterans Administration wanted to put a hospital in Murfreesboro or Rutherford County in 1937. Right. And they wanted to put it in a location between <coughs> Lebanon Pike and the Stones River, which is where it's located. Okay. And that was Thomas Rucker's land. Of course, he was long deceased, but his house was still, an old house was still, his house was still on that land. And um, there were several families that owned that land and the Veterans Administration purchased 451 acres and built the Veterans Administration Hospital, the Alvin C. York VA right. Hospital that's there now. And I believe it was started in 1938 and was opened about 1940. And as part of that construction, the Thomas Rucker House was taken down. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it had not been lived in for some time and was old and in, not in, in repair. But um, yeah, the story you're referring to is there, there were several individuals that owned land that the Veterans Administration Hospital needed and one group of the um, f one family that uh, owned part of the land had a disagreement among the heirs as to who really owned the land and they thought it was worth six thousand dollars and they got into a lawsuit and my father who practiced law with his grandfather represented one set of heirs and a lawyer out of Watertown represented another set of heirs and they tried the lawsuit uh, in front of the judge, uh, Judge Lytle, actually, from Columbia. Mm -hmm. Of the and same Lytle family? Uh, Possibly. I'm Not sure. <laughs> probably. And in those days, the judge had a circuit, so he would come and hear a case in Murfreesboro and might be gone for six months or nine months. And he took the case under advisement and, and didn't decide it and didn't decide it. And then finally, the uh, federal government came along and purchased land and put into court $12,000. Well, the two groups of heirs that were disagreeing about this thought they each were entitled to $6,000, so they settled the lawsuit. And each one of them took $6,000 and 
they got what they thought they were, were deserved. And uh, the next time Judge Lytle came to Murfreesboro, my grandfather and my father stood up in front of him and said, well, we've settled that lawsuit that you have under advisement. And the judge reached in his pocket and pulled out a piece of paper and tore it in half and said, well, I guess you won't need to know what I decided <laughs> in the case. And my father always said he didn't know whether the judge was just pulling their leg or if he really had made a decision that he was about to announce to So them. never really knew what the we, judge's decision was. We never been. knew what the yeah. judge's decision was going to be. Oh, boy. Pam, has got to be some Lytle stories that, that you could share with us. Well, one thing that I think is really interesting, my mother's name is Ann, right. and my sister's middle name is Ann. And tracing this all the way back to Captain William Lytle's wife, she was Nancy Ann Taylor Lytle, and there's an Ann all the way through. Oh. So um, I, only in the South, I think, are we <laughs> named for our relatives over and over and over again. It's like we've run out of names by the time we name a child. But and typical of the South, your mother is referred to as Ann Nora. Right? Yes, both first names. double name. Double She's name, named right. for both of her grandmothers. Okay, so, so that's where the other name comes that's from. That's right. And that's she makes right. wonderful banana pudding. Oh, well. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, how about the Murphy family? Well, she was talking about the Anns and her family. My name is Matthias Breckel, and Matthias Breckel was the father-in-law of Colonel Hardy Murphy. So you think Hardy died in 1809, so his father-in-law died long before that. Okay. So that name's been in the family ever since. And you've got the son, Ma Matthew Brickle, right, right, now. right. and he uh, uh, goes by Brick. Right, and the original Matthias was a, an Episcopal minister. Okay. Oh. What about this Murfreesboro name, B-O-R-O-U-G-H, and it got, now it's B-O-R-O. Uh, they changed it. How did, how did this all come about? Does anybody know? Does, it, does anyone know? I don't know why, do you, Matt? I, I guess they wanted to simplify the length mm -hmm. of the name. Yeah. I don't think it's ever really legally been changed, has it, John? That's what we've, I've been told, that it has actually officially been changed. But from maybe Burrow. we're going to do something about that. So <laughs> we're talking about doing, doing the bicentennial, yeah. Never really official from the O-R-O-U-G-H -O to O-R-O. You know, at first they uh, thought they were going to name the uh, county seat Cannonsboro. Right. But um, they decided that, uh, or Captain William Lytle really pushed to have it named for his friend because he felt, you know, he uh, really felt a lot for him and, and wanted to honor him in that way. And uh, so they went ahead and Captain William Lytle must have been persuasive and no got doubt. it done. And we haven't talked about Newton Cannon. How, how did he f figure into this at that time? He, he lived in Franklin and was the governor of Tennessee. In fact, his daughter married uh, the son of the people that built Oakland's. Okay. And we had in the family a name, Newton Cannon Manny. Mm -hmm. That was uh, most of the Mannies from that point on were named Newton Cannon. Okay. But he was the governor of Tennessee. And of course, our village here is, is named Cannonsburg, and that's the reason of that name. I think Mayor Westbrook's had a lot to do with that village being created and named Cannonsburg, which was one of the early names. That but I don't think there was an actual place there. I think it was just a name that they gave to the Pioneer Village. Oh, I think that's right, to the Pioneer mm -hmm. Village. Uh, uh. What, what about your families today in, in, involved in, in, uh, in the life of the community? Of course, we mentioned your, your practice of law and, and you and your son together. And uh, you've been a member of the old county court, now the county commission, and been very involved in the community over the years. Yes, and, and you know, I think those of us that sort of look to the past, obviously the three of us have very much looked to the future, and I've been involved in the Christie Houston Foundation, and uh, recently, well, I've been on the board of the hospital here for over 40 years. What a wonderful new facility we have now. We're very proud of it. I know. You mentioned Christie Houston Foundation. What a wonderful way of the old Rutherford Hospital being sold and that money put into the Chris Houston Foundation has meant so much to so many aspects of this community over the years and helped us to go forward. We, I, I was asked by the board to handle the sale and we sold it to Baptist and St. Thomas Hospital, which was 
a piece of work in and of itself because we had two di different religious groups, but we received $47 million. We've given away, and the old hospital board resigned, right. and we became the Christie Houston board. We've given away some $60 million, almost 100% to this community, and we still have more than twice what we sold it for, for future. That's wonderful. There are always folks are thinking of the Christie Houston Foundation when they need a little funding for some community agency, and it's wonderful what you've done. Pam, how about you and your family? And of course, your dad was a longtime teacher, as a matter of fact. He was a teacher. Um, he has been involved in many, many aspects of the community. He served with on the Christie Houston Foundation uh, and the hospital board, uh -huh. bank boards, um, the road board. He's just retired from the Equalization Board. Um, he's, he'll be 90 years old next month. So he decided maybe it was time for somebody else to take over. Um, it's one of those things that once you start volunteering in a community that you love and you want to support and want it to be the best that it can be, you just keep on doing that. Which we all know and very well and enjoy doing. We right? do. We yeah. do. He's one of the best and has done oh, a lot. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Your involvement personally, you're, you we introduced you as a community volunteer. Well, um, right now I'm working on the Power of Pink, um, which um, will happen uh, later on this month. And um, I work with uh, different um, aspects of Charity Circle, Murfreesboro Charity Circle. Um, I try to put in time at Oakland's because I feel like uh, the more we preserve the past, the better our future will be. Jock, tell us about uh, the Rucker family and, and your personal involvement and, and the family involvement. Well, my f one thing I want to touch on, John, is I've known Matt and Pam growing up. Our parents were all good friends, and it's interesting that the three of us up here and all of our parents knew each other, were such good friends. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, Matt's parents and my parents had a supper club that they were in for many years, and, and uh, one of my good friends growing up was Pam's younger brother and and uh, so it, it's interesting that yeah. all three of us uh, the families That's really right. knew each other and and had a great deal of respect for, for right. every, each yeah. one of us and we appreciate all your involvement uh, and your dad of course serves as a state senator and as well as an attorney here in the, in the community he was a general sessions judge in 1948 to 1962 and then was served in the in the state senate for about 12 years and was on the city council i believe in the murfreesboro city, city school board that's right matter of fact i think i followed him on the murfreesboro city school board you I did calling and talking about that opportunity what a great community we have and what wonderful citizens you are and thank you for coming and sharing uh, with us the information about your respective families and the role that they had in starting this community the city of murfreesboro if you will and making what a, what a great place it is today Thank you so much for, for being with us, and, and we look forward to seeing you from time to time in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next month, we'll continue to look at the early days of Murfreesboro as the bicentennial theme is about our beginnings. Please take a moment to participate in and enjoy the many activities scheduled for our bicentennial celebration. For more information about what's happening throughout Murfreesboro, you can call our city's Park and Recreation Department at 890-5333 or visit www.murfreesboro.tn.gov. Thank you for joining us today, and we thank Matt Murphy, Pam Caius, and Jock Rucker for being our guest on Murfreesboro Storytellers, a Bicentennial Celebration.